the ancient Romans always fought to subjugate the numerous tribes that inhabited Europe. The Celts were impressive enemies, who forced even the great Julius Caesar to spend many years warring in Gaul, until they were finally defeated. But there was also a people so cruel and savage in battle that they were considered barbarians even by the Celts, the Germanics. As with the Celts, the Germanics were not exactly a unified people. They were divided into many different tribes, sharing the same language, religious beliefs, and culture in general. They inhabited Germania, a large region dominated by the Romans, which nowadays comprises Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Belgium, and part of France. Germania is a land of hills occupied predominantly by dense forests and some swamps. With tall trees close together, they create an almost constant blanket of shadows and mist on the ground. Their natural borders are the Rhine River, which separated Germania from Gaul, and the steppes, which separated Germania from Scythia, the land of the fearsome nomadic horsemen. In this dark and hostile environment, one could find the Germanic peoples. The Proto-Germanic culture originated around 1800 BC. The tribes that gave origin to this culture came from Scandinavia, after having migrated to the south due to climate changes. They occupied territories that previously belonged to the Celts. After that, Celts and Germanic spent many generations sharing a mutual hatred, fighting bloody battles for territories. At the time of the Roman conquest, these were the main Germanic tribes, the Suevi, Frisians, Cimbri, Teutons, and Marcomanni. The tribes were made up of different clans with warrior traditions. In fact, the warrior caste ran the Germanic society with the leaders of each clan putting together a warrior assembly to decide on matters of war or peace, and to pass judgment on crimes and punishments. In the society, those ranked first were the members of the nobility, second, the freemen, who could bear arms and participate in the assembly of warriors, and third, the servants, such as farmers, fishermen, and blacksmiths. Lastly were the slaves, Women were highly respected and had their roles in society, such as clothing, pottery, and tending the crops. Men acknowledged women's ability to predict events and did not hesitate to ask their advice. Marriage was something taken very seriously. Both men and women married only once in their lives. In rare cases, members of the nobility took more than one wife, if that was needed to have children or arrange political marriages. Agriculture was the main source of food, besides cattle raising and hunting wild animals. Unlike the Celts, the Germanics were not very prone to art. According to the Roman historian Tacitus, they paid no mind to silver and gold. Each tribe had a supreme chief, or king, as many called themselves. These kings were elected by the warrior assembly, and could also be disposed by election. These were responsible for commanding the warriors during battle followed by a group of elite warriors. Free men were trained from childhood by their fathers, uncles, or older brothers. They were considered fit for combat by the age of 16, when they were given a shield and a spear by the chief of the tribe. This training produced large, strong warriors who wore long beards or mustaches. Julius Caesar described the Germanics as follows. The Germanic people are incredibly tall, brave, and skillful with their weapons. Even their gaze is unbearable. The Germanic people of the Suevi tribe were regarded as the most fearsome. Their warriors were characterized by long hair tied on the side of the head. A male skull was discovered in Osterby, Germany, in 1948, still preserving the hair and traditional Suevi knot. The main weapon was the spear, but they also used axes, javelins, slings, long knives, swords, and a somewhat unusual weapon for the time, the wooden club. Albeit a primitive weapon, the club could generate a great impact, breaking shields, bones, and causing injuries even to soldiers who wore armor and helmets. The Germanics were experts in guerrilla tactics and psychological terror, using the forest to ambush and even fight at night. Some warriors painted their weapons and bodies with a black dye, using charcoal mixed with a bit of water, creating a sort of camouflage. Only their eyes were visible to terrify their enemies. They were called the Harii, the ghost warriors. 
Even in their environment, the Germanics managed to develop a fine cavalry. They used an impressive tactic to say the least, where young warriors advanced by running side by side with their horses during the attack. This allowed for a simultaneous cavalry and infantry attack. Dropping their weapons and fleeing from battle was unacceptable. Tacitus mentioned that some warriors committed suicide by hanging when they did this shameful act. Another unusual custom of the Germanic people was to bring their relatives close to the battlefield. By doing this, the men could hear the cries of encouragement from their wives and children while fighting. Most of the time, it was for them that they were fighting. They also wore the skins of animals, including bears, wolves, and wild boars in a ritualistic manner. This custom can be traced back to prehistoric times. They believed that wearing the skins of these animals would grant them strength and courage in battle. The famous berserkers of the Viking sagas have their origin in the Germanic peoples, and the same applies to the deities and stories of Norse mythology. Not much is known about the beginnings of the Proto-Germanic religion. Its origin is traced to the Neolithic period. In some points, it resembles the Celts, such as the veneration of the forces of nature and animals. However, Proto-Germanic religion had unique, somewhat more primitive traits that would be deemed dark today. The priestesses were the main figure in this religion. They were regarded as healers, midwives, and seers, consulting the gods through divination and omens. The priestesses were feared by the Romans. Even the tribal chiefs obeyed their judgments. The Germanic people often did human sacrifices. Hanging the bodies of enemies from trees was a way to make these, while sending a warning to the enemies. There were reports of Roman soldiers panicking, afraid of entering the Germanic forests. Plenty of gods in Norse mythology had their origin in the Proto-Germanic religion, such as Odin, Thor, Frigga, Tyr, who originally had different names. Odin was called Wodanes, the father of the gods, lord of wisdom, death, and trade. Thor was known as Thunaraz, the god of rain, and the one closest to humans, since he protected their world and helped with the crops. Frigga was named Frijo, wife of Odinaz. She was the goddess protector of family, woman, and revenge. Tyr was named after Tiwaz, the god of war, courage, loyalty, to whom most sacrifices involving blood were made. The diversity and strength of the Germanic peoples were a tremendous obstacle for the Romans' expansion plans. A clash between the two cultures would be inevitable.